Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. Chapter 8 The Tale of the Ensorcelled Prince. The handsome young man began his story, revealing that he was the son of the king of a country called the Black Isles. The Black Isles got their name from the four little mountains that were once islands, and the capital was located where the Great Lake now lies. His father passed away when he was 66, and the young man succeeded him as king. He married his cousin, whom he loved deeply, and believed loved him in return. One afternoon, while he was half asleep with two of her maids fanning him, he overheard them talking. One maid expressed pity for their master, noting that his wife no longer loved him and was cheating on him. Every night, she drugged his wine, causing him to sleep deeply, then donned her best gown, perfumed herself, and left until morning. She would return and use herbs to wake him. That night, at dinner, he pretended to drink the drugged wine and feigned sleep. He saw his wife dress in her finest gown, perfume herself, and leave. He followed her to a mud house where she was having an affair with one of her servants. When they were asleep, he attempted to kill the servant by slashing his neck, but only managed to wound him. His wife awoke and he fled back to the palace, pretending to sleep. The next morning, his wife wore mourning garments and claimed her family had died. She wept and wailed, asking him to build a palace in the garden where she could mourn. He agreed, and she moved the wounded servant there. The servant could only drink wine and couldn't speak or move. For three years, she visited him daily, hoping he would recover. One day, the young man confronted her, asking how long she would continue this. She became enraged, accused him of wounding the servant, which he admitted. In her fury, she used magic to turn him into half stone from the waist down and transformed his kingdom into the Great Lake. The four colored fish were the different races of people who lived there. Every day, she tortured him with 100 whips before returning to the servant to weep. The Sultan took pity on the young man and promised to help. He asked where the palace garden was, where his wife kept the servant. The next morning, the Sultan went to the palace in the garden. He destroyed the little life left in the servant and threw his body down a well. Then, he lay on the couch and pretended to be the servant. When the sorceress arrived, she whipped the young king then went to the Sultan, thinking he was the servant. She asked how he was feeling, and the Sultan replied, How can I be better when I can't sleep because I hear your husband's cries every day? Overjoyed that the servant could speak, she promised to turn him back to his proper form. She went to the young king, turned him back, and threatened him to leave before she killed him. The young king hid. The sorceress returned to the Sultan, asking how he felt. The Sultan said, What you have done is not enough. Every midnight, the people you turned into fish lift their heads from the lake and cry for vengeance, preventing my recovery. She hurried away and restored the people and the city. She returned to the Sultan, who beckoned her closer and then struck her down with his sword. The Sultan found the young king and told him the sorceress was dead. The young king thanked him profusely. The Sultan wished to return to his people, but realized the journey would take a year now that the enchantment was lifted. He decided to make the young king his heir and took him back to his kingdom, bearing many gifts from the Black Isles. A year later, they arrived at the Sultan's kingdom. The Grand Vizier and the people were overjoyed to see their Sultan after a year of disappearance. The Sultan introduced the young king as his heir 
and appointed the Grand Vizier to oversee the Black Isles. He summoned the fishermen to thank him, as it was because of him that the young king was freed. Learning the fishermen had two daughters and a son. The Sultan married the eldest daughter, made the younger daughter his son's wife, and appointed the fisherman's son as the palace treasury manager. The fisherman became the richest man in the kingdom. The story ended, and Shasherazad promised the Sultan and her sister that she had more interesting tales to tell.